Hi guys and welcome to another video from Nottingham Music Excellence. So today I'm going to play this lovely piece, an early work by Carl Nielsen called Fantasy Piece for Clarinet. So if you're new to my channel, hi and a big warm welcome. My name is Chris Allison and I upload content onto YouTube explaining and talking about individual pieces from the ABRSM syllabus for beginner musicians and as well as other videos that I've done this video will kind of be like an online lesson, a mini lesson on this piece. So I'm going to start off by playing the piece through with the piano track. I hope you enjoy that. And then after that, I'm going to go through the piece bit by bit. And we're going to talk about some of the detail that you need to execute in there to make this piece sound really awesome. <laughs> So as with all my videos, all the details of the timings will be in that description down below. So if you want to jump to any particular part of the video, then please do feel free to just skip straight to that. Anyway, here we go. This is a cracking piece. Let's do it. Okay, so you've heard the piece, let's get into some of the detail. So I think it's fair to say that this is a reasonably challenging piece for grade five. I don't think pupils are going to find this an easy grade five piece. There's plenty in there to, to really get stuck into. There's a big dynamic range, big range of sounds, plenty of use of virtuosic display and plenty of articulation detail in there as well. Now do drop me a comment below in that comment section if you're having a go at this piece and you're finding it ooh, just a bit difficult to master or maybe you just play this piece like a like a god and you're just amazing at it <laughs> and you've been playing it for ages. Drop me a comment in that box below and tell me how you're getting on with it. I'd be really interested to hear. Now I quite like the way this piece really sort of eases you into the difficulties. I think that's quite a nice thing in any exam. So we start off with some fairly easy music. We've got a nice big piano introduction. I think 
no, quite nice notes to start on, nothing too difficult there. But then boom, by the time we get to bar 14, we're into this massive top C, big sound, and it all gets a bit more technically involved quite quick. So when you get to that top C, don't back off, really go for it. And also don't skip over that articulation detail as it comes down and you've got to phrase off in twos there. Make sure you get that in there. So. So don't just skip the detail. Don't slur it all like some of my pupils have been doing. So really go for those twos. So make sure you get that detail in there. Also, I notice in that bar 14, there is a diminuendo marked in there, just on the third beat. I would say leave that till the next bar. Don't lose that sound too quick. So just go for a big sound for the whole of that bar. I would say just leave the diminuendo a little bit later till the next bar. And moving on to bar 19, a little bit of a fiddly bit here. Pupils find that a little bit tricky, so you've got the F natural, but then it changes back to the F sharp on the on the sextuplet up there. So just practice that really slowly. And try and really tongue that B after that beats on the third beat there. So just really try and get the articulation synchronized there. Make that nice and, nice and neat and tidy. Also on the F there on that tie, maybe just try it with and without the tie just to hear the difference there. And then put the tie back in. I'll give you a good idea of the rhythm there. And then through the next section, this is fairly straightforward. I think you've got a nice C major scale there. Again, all nice notes on the instrument to play there. Okay, so onto the second time bar. Now this is marked as bar 31B. Just be careful as you play through here that all the semiquaver, all the dotted quaver, semiquaver rhythms really match up. So they all, all sound the same. So be really accurate about the three quarters and the quarter. So just make sure that doesn't sound like a bouncy 6-8 rhythm. So really keep that semiquaver in the right place. And then we're on to another big top C. And a nice chromatic scale coming down. Now, why is it that pupils can't play a chromatic scale? Now, as a pupil, now when I was learning, I used to love playing chromatic scales just it was quite pleasurable, you know, it's kind of flying up and down the instrument. And I think they really, they give you a bit of a buzz, don't they? Because you, you don't have to think about what the sharps or the flats are. You're just really going up and down the order of the keys. So I think if you just learn that carefully, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. But um, having heard a few pupils play this, it seems to be a bit of a problem. And I think it's partly because coming down, I think pupils generally find coming down on the chromatic scale a little bit harder. So I think just make sure that you make sure you use these keys that are really useful in chromatic scales. So especially this like fork key for the F sharp. So that little key there. And personally, I would go for a left hand C sharp on the way down, keep my little finger on that C. So I'm going C sharp, C, B. So that actually can stay down for three notes. Now I use that going up and down and it just gives you a really concrete way, just minimizes the finger work a little bit. So use that fourth finger there. And then when I go for that left hand C sharp, put my C key down as well. So that's going to stay down for three notes. So just things like that can really help to minimize the key work. And if you learn that pattern, just keep practicing it until you've really got it. And then you can just use it for any chromatic passage that comes up. The good thing about this, of course, is that you can, you can play that at your own speed. So if you're finding that chromatic scale a bit tricky, just take your time and just go over the keys one by one. Don't try and play it too fast and then trip yourself up. 
Okay, and moving on to the Allegro Agitato. Now this, now this in theory, I think it, sh it shouldn't be too bad. It's all based around A minor, but there's always a but in there, isn't there? I think, but it's going round that break key, that tricky bit from B to the A, it's going round that part of the instrument quite a bit. So I think if you don't play it really evenly, you will really hear it clearly. So you've got to practice this quite carefully. So I would suggest maybe just try all sorts of different possibilities out here. Maybe just play all the semicravers as one big string of notes. So try that first, just make sure you really know what keys you're using. Um, so decide whether you're going, I would personally, on the first bar for example, as I go down those notes, I'd go for a right hand C, add that for the B, and then round, use the same finger in. Perhaps on the, on the bit where it goes to bar 41, I'd maybe just go for a one fingered B there. So try and invent some clever ways to practice this so that you can really in your in your mind and in your fingers really work out exactly what's going on. So try all sorts of different things out. You could try this rhythm as well. And then you could turn that back round the other way, the opposite end of that. Bit trickier that one. And then go back and play it exactly as you see it on the page, perhaps with a metronome or something. And hopefully after you've done all these little possibilities and tried out all sorts of different things, eventually you will be the fantasy piece god. So basically what you're trying to achieve here is you're trying to keep all the finger work down to an absolute minimum and keep your fingers relaxed as well. So you need to really train your brain into thinking that this is easy. I can play it. This is easy. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit. I hope that gives you some ideas. Now over to the slow motion part of the video. Well, not really slow motion, but I'm gonna play some of the some of the trickier sections of this with a metronome click track. So I would invite you to get your clarinet out, crank up the speakers, and see if you can play some of this at a slightly steadier tempo with the clicks with me really evenly. So I'm going to play from bar 14 to 24 and then I'm going to play the Allegro as well. Okay, so I've grabbed my metronome. I'm going to play from bar 14 and, and I've set the BPM, I've set the beats per minute to 63, which is quite slow. Okay, so see if you can play this from bar 14. I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, and then we're in. One, two, three. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Now I'm going to go through the Allegro Agitato section now with a metronome, really under tempo. See if you can play this evenly at this speed. So I've set this to 76 BPM. Okay, so I'll give you one, two, three, four, and then we're in. One, two, three. I think that's a wrap for the fantasy piece. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. If you did like the video and you found it useful, of course, smash that like button, give it a like, give me a comment underneath as well. 
and if you're presenting this for examination this term then the very best of luck to you hope you do really well see you on the next video bye